Christmas, and I'm looking forward to being with my family, but I cannot wait for 2018 at Living Faith Church. <clears throat> I don't like to hold hands with anybody except my wife. All you men say amen, especially if they got the sweaty hands. Amen, somebody? Isn't that just a little creepy? I want you to uh, not just hold hands with a person next to you. I want you to grab a hold of them. Come here, Jamie Sharp. Get up here. Oh, you know what he's saying? Man, I wish I'd have got out of the drum cage sooner. <laughs> this joker is strong. He is a linebacker. He plays football, and he is strong. I want you to grip my hand. Don't break it. Don't break it, but grip it. Get a hold of the hand of the person next to you. Tight. 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 In 2018, I'm going to start preaching. Grab hold. Say, grab hold of hope. Thank you, brother. Love you. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of it. Grab a hold of it. The promises of God are there, but Satan's going to fight you, and sometimes you got to get aggressive. Grab a hold in prayer. Grab a hold in your worship. Listen, worship like you worship this morning. Sometimes you got to worship through your pain. Sometimes you got to worship through your failure, through your brokenness, through your mistakes. You say, I don't feel worthy to worship God. It don't matter if you feel worthy. He's worthy. And when you worship, you get breakthrough in your life. And I want you to grab a hold of something. I want you to grab a hold of something that only God can do for you in this new year. And he doesn't have to wait till 2018. He can do it this morning. I'm going to be here preaching next Sunday morning, Christmas Eve, Sunday morning, the, the morning service, the 24th. We'll be here. So we're having church. Somebody say amen to that. I, I know some of you might travel, but if you're here, come church. If you've got family here, bring them with you. Let's And, and I, I'm, we're just not going to come in here and have some cute little kids in bathrobe service. Got nothing wrong with that, but, you know, we're going to come in and worship. It's a worship service dedicated to Jesus Christ. I'm not about to kick back and recline just because it's Christmas. I'm going to worship my Savior. We want you to come out. We want you to come blessed and excited. Let me, what time is it? <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> I'm still going to preach for a few minutes. <laughs> That came across cocky. I apologize. I didn't mean it that way. Thank you, brother. God came near. That's been our series. I'm going to do it one more time next week. God came near. Did anybody even care? Does anybody even care today? Well, I think I can answer that question. For most of you, I think you care very, very much. I think you're excited. Let's look at our scripture one more time. Matthew 1 and 23. The Bible says there, Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a child. She'll give birth to a son. They will call him Emmanuel. The name Emmanuel, I didn't, use, didn't, didn't remember that one this morning in, in my introduction I gave you. I, I apologize. The name Emmanuel means God is with us. Somebody say out loud, God is with me. It's not just that he made us, that he's above us, that he's around us. He is with us. He promises us this, that he will walk with us through anything and through everything. And, and so God, God came near the, the birth, the, the first Christmas, this time that we celebrate on December 25th, did anybody care about it? Well, you got to stop and look at the timing of God. Just let me throw some thoughts out and I'll quit, I promise. Somebody say the timing of God. Why hasn't God done what I want Him to do yet? Why hasn't God done what I want Him to do yet? I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Because between the period that the last prophet prophesied and spoke messages and wrote down messages, there was a period of silence, 400 years there were no prophets speaking, nothing recorded. Yes, God was there, but he wasn't saying a whole lot. Why did God wait 400 years? I don't know. I have no idea. Nobody knows. No scholar can tell you that. Paul ventures to say, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem those who are under the law. But for whatever reason, he chose to wait. Say the timing of God again out loud. Why is God waiting in my life? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I believe that we are coming into a season of answered prayer and things that you have been waiting for. I can go ahead and tell you God's working in my life in a mighty way. I'm not waiting till 2018. He's, he's messing with me right now. Yesterday morning, Missy and I were still unpacking boxes. Somebody say again. Where is my dad blame toothbrush? You remember when you moved? 
You're, you've turned the house upside down, looked in every box you can think of. It'll turn up. It'll turn up. I don't know what's going on. We were unpacking boxes. And the Lord began to stir me. And I, 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 I ignored him two or three times. Does anybody else do that? Lord, we don't have much time. It's Saturday. We got, we got all day together to do this. We ain't got much time. We got to get unpacked somehow or another and get, get, get straightened out, squared away, and get back to living. And I finally just walked in and said, Missy? She said, yeah. I said, can we go pray for a little bit? She said, yeah. She just dropped what she was doing. We had to go in our bedroom, kick boxes out of the way so we could kneel down beside the bed. Amen, somebody? Boy, you want to test your sanctification? Get up in the middle of the night and trip over a packing box. That'll test your sanctification. Hello? We just, just began to pray. Just began to pray. God, would you pour out your spirit on me like you've never done before? Somebody told me the other day people don't know how to pray, so here's what I'm going to tell you how I pray. God, I can't make it today without you. I need you more today than I needed you yesterday. God, if I don't have you, I'll fall into temptation and sin. God, I can't preach without you. It doesn't matter how much I study, how much I memorize. God, I can't pastor that church without you. God, I can't be a good husband without you. God, I can't be a good wife without you. God, I can't be a good parent without you. Is anybody listening to me this morning? Let the Spirit of God stir you like He's never stirred you before. And grab a hold of hope. Grab a hold of hope. Dare to believe. Dare to believe that even though what you're dealing with is impossible, you serve an impossible God. Amen, anybody? Dare, I dare you. I dare you to believe. Jude said, pray on your most holy faith. Don't pray on what the pastor said. Don't pray on what you heard on TV. Get on the bedrock, the foundation of your faith, the thing that saved you, the thing that brought you to God. Kneel down if need be and say, God, I am kneeling on my faith in you and I am asking you to do what only you can do. I believe every story of the Bible. I believe every account. I believe you stopped the mouths of lions. I believe you quenched the violence of fire. I believe you did that, God. And I believe that you can answer in my situation. Anybody else? I dare you, just get out on your faith. Don't get out on it. Don't get out on your problems. My God, there, there's what's messing with you right now. Get down on your faith. and Begin to call upon the name of the Lord. Because God, He is still coming near. But did anybody care? There's the timing of God. Why did He wait? I don't know. He waited. And then He appeared to people. He, appeared, he didn't appear to the emperor of Rome. The angel Gabriel did not go to the emperor of Rome and say there's a new king in town. The angel Gabriel did not go to the Sanhedrin council. That was the ruling religious council of the Jewish people. He did not go to any of them. One of them came to him in John chapter 3. Nicodemus, he came by night. He was a member of the Sanhedrin, but God didn't announce himself to the Sanhedrin. God didn't announce himself to the priest or the high priest chosen by God. He didn't announce himself to them, but he announced himself to different people. <clears throat> there was one very humble priest, very lowly priest, not known, not political, not on any committees, not on any boards, not on anything. Just a lowly, humble priest. His name was <clears throat> Zechariah and had a wife named Elizabeth. The Bible said they were old. They had no children. She was barren. The lot fell for him to serve. He was in the temple, the Bible said, offering incense. He had gone into the holy place, not the holy of holies. Couldn't do that. He went into the holy place and he was offering sacrifice, offering incense rather, excuse me. The angel appeared to him and said, your wife is going to give birth to a son. He is going to be a Nazarite from, from birth. Therefore, he is not to drink any alcohol, the Bible said. That's a Nazarite vow right there. And then the angel went on and said, you're going to call his name John. He's going to make way for the Messiah. He's going to lead the hearts of the fathers back to their son. Zechariah had a hard time grasping it because of his age. He said, how is this possible? My wife and I are old. And the angel said, because you don't believe me, you're going to be struck dumb until the baby is born. And so come to find out, Elizabeth con uh, conceives, goes through her pregnancy. Uh, Zechariah never speaks another word until the day they go to dedicate the baby and, and the, the, the relatives stand around him and say, well, we need to call him Zechariah after his father and his mother Elizabeth said, no, his name's going to be John. And the, the uh, relatives argued and said, there's no one in your family named John. Why would you use that name? 
and Zechariah motioned, and they brought him a writing tablet, a tablet, and he wrote down on it, his name is John. And as he finished that in, his mouth opened and praise of God began to pour out of his mouth. He began to glorify God because he had obeyed. <clears throat> but he was <clears throat> obscure, lowly, held no high position, no one special, and nothing like that at all. Now, we know that the innkeeper could have been host to the Messiah, but he chose money over the Messiah. Amen, somebody. He left him out in the cold. Luke chapter 2, verse number 6. Put it up for me, if you would, please. <clears throat> While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging for them. No lodging for them. So again, it was not announced to royalty. It was not announced to Herod, the Tetrarch of, of Judea. It was not announced to Pilate, the Roman governor, but it was announced to lowly, humble people. Let me introduce you to a man called Simeon. Verse number 22, Luke chapter 2. It was the time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of the child. So his parents brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, Jewish law said you presented your child on the eighth day. Somebody give me an amen. Sometimes people question me and say, Pastor, why do you dedicate children like that? Why do the people come up and you take their baby and hold it? And what, is, what is that about? And in some faiths, they, they, they baptize the infants, and they believe that by baptizing the infant that they've offered to that child salvation from that point. But the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches that each of us have to accept Christ of our own. We have to believe on him and make the choice and make the decision. May I have an amen, please? And so when you see me dedicate a baby, every time you will hear me say this one thing. The dedication of a child does not impart salvation to this child. What we are doing is saying, Lord, thank you for this baby. And we know that this little boy or this little girl is a gift from you. We're praying for the parents that they be as good of parents as they can, not perfect because there ain't no perfect parents. Amen, somebody? I hope my son's watching online right now. There ain't no perfect parents. Amen. But we offer the child back and we say, Lord, protect this child. Watch over this child. We acknowledge that this child is a gift from you. And that's what Mary and Joseph were doing. They took, isn't it cool? They took God to be dedicated to God. Somebody say amen. Isn't it, doesn't sometimes these mysteries, don't they just blow your mind just a little bit? I was reading the other day a devotional and a Christian teacher at a Christian school, Belinda, this is so cool. You might have even seen this. A Christian teacher at a Christian school asked her kids any questions they wanted to ask of Mary the mother of Jesus. These questions were so cool, coming from children. What kind of food did Jesus like? What didn't he like? The one that got me absolutely, did he have a dog? I, I like, wow, to see life through the eyes of a child is so cool sometimes. Amen, somebody? So they took the, the baby Jesus to be dedicated <clears throat> to the Lord. They went to the temple in Jerusalem. Now watch what happens here. Verse 25, and I'm going fast. Don't, don't worry about the time, guys. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem <clears throat> excuse me, named Simeon. Boy, Kyle, you sung our lungs out this morning, but it was good, brother. I got, I got, to, have, got to have that water. Excuse me. His name was Simeon. He was, say it out loud, please. <clears throat> say it again. And devout, that means dedicated to God. Watch this. He was eagerly waiting. Somebody say that out loud. Eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come to rescue Israel. What are you eagerly waiting for today? I know what some of the kids are thinking. They see the, the gifts. Dear Lord, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but Missy and I these days, what do you want for Christmas? Nothing. Anybody else? I don't need nothing. We just pared down in order to move. We just had a monster yard sale. I love it. I convinced total strangers to buy junk that I was gladly going to throw away. Amen, somebody? I actually got money for it. But what, what do you want for Christmas? I, I, I'm not really interested in gifts. No big deal. I want to be with family and people I love. Amen, somebody? What are you eagerly waiting for? Because what you're eagerly waiting for is what's going to happen in your life. If you go try, you can probably make a lot of money. Go ahead, say amen. 
If you go try, you can probably pile up cars, toys, houses, stuff. If you try, you probably can. It's what you're eagerly waiting for. But I am telling you, as much as I love the Lord and as long as I've been preaching and pastoring, I want so much more of God than ever before right now. I want to get closer to Him. I want to please Him. I want to be more like Him. I don't want to amass stuff. I don't want to pile up stuff. I want to serve my Jesus. He was eagerly waiting. Go to the next verse. Watch this, verse 26. Uh, the whole, oh, go back. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't finish it. I need you to go back. He was eagerly waiting for the Messiah. The Holy Spirit was upon him. Ooh. See, some of you just did that right there. Oh, he's special. He's not special. He's just a guy. And the same Holy Spirit that's on him is the Holy Spirit that's on my life and can be on your life if you will invite him into your life. You are not, you are not disinclined to have the power of the Holy Spirit. You are welcome to be touched, filled the Spirit of God on you. Amen, somebody? The Holy Spirit was on him. Now go to verse 26 for me. And he had revealed to him. God was speaking to him. Why didn't God reveal to the Sanhedrin council the 70 leaders of the Jewish faith? They weren't listening. Why didn't God reveal to the Roman emperor? Because he wasn't listening. Why didn't God reveal to the high priest of the Jewish faith? Because he wasn't listening. What are you eagerly waiting for? What are you eagerly anticipating? You show me your, your dream, I'll show you your God. And it could be that your God is money. It could be that your God is pleasure or power or something like that. We talked about it in our small group this morning. How these things worm into us into our soul, into our subconscious, and they begin to take authority over us and we don't even realize it. But Simeon, the Spirit of God was upon him. Let's go on and read now. Watch this story. This is so cool. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. Is anybody led of the Holy Spirit? Does anybody want to be led of the Holy Spirit? You can be. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, keep going, Simeon was there, he took the child in his arms and he praised God. Now, this is, this is one of my favorite stories of all time because you got a young couple. you got a young father and a young mother. Now, I don't know about you parents, but I vividly remember the day Andrew was born. Never forget it. I was there in the room. I'm one of those newer fathers that was in the delivery room. My dad wasn't. No, no how, no, they, were they going to do that back then? But I was. I vividly remember that. And I remember bringing him home. I remember we lived upstairs in an apartment, a second story apartment. And me and my dad had to make a sling and pick up and carry Missy up the stairs so she wouldn't have to climb stairs. And I remember that. I remember getting in the house, sitting down, setting the baby down in the carrier, looking around at everything. And I looked down at this kid and I thought, oh no, what do we do now? Because I have no clue how to be a parent. Amen, somebody? And the, the hospital did not send home an owner's manual. As a matter of fact, Andrew had sugar deficiency when he was born, and they sent home bottles of sugar water. Now, I'm a health nut, okay? Now, these people are professionals. They're medical professionals. They went to college for this and took tests, and they gave me bottles of sugar water to feed a baby. I mean, how stupid is that? So I, I tried to feed. I'm not kidding. Within the first week, I tried to feed him baby food. That was interesting, by the way. What do I do with this kid? But then you got Joseph and Mary, and not only are they young, new, first-time parents, but they're going to try and raise God. You ever stop and thought about Christmas, really? And so they do what the law says. They take him to the temple to dedicate the baby to the Lord, and a total stranger rushes up and grabs the baby boy out of their arms. He lifts him up in the air, and he begins to praise God. Wow. Wow. Pretty wild, isn't it? Let's go to the next. sovereign Lord. He said, Now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. Why? Go on. I have seen your salvation. Read on. Which you prepared for all people. Read on. He is the light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people Israel. Read on. Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Keep going. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, but he will be a joy to many others. 
He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. And watch this, verse 35. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. You see, he prophesied. He prophesied through the power of the Holy Spirit, just a common, ordinary man that was eagerly looking for God and not the world around him. Amen, anybody? So what are you eager for? And then I want to introduce you to another woman. And the Bible doesn't say as much about her, and I apologize for that, but at the same instance, her name is Anna. Keep going, please. She was a prophet. She was also in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when she had been married only seven years. Go on. She lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but she stayed there day and night, worshiping and praising God with fasting and prayer. Go on one more. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. So why is it <clears throat> that the high priests are clueless? And the Sanhedrin's clueless, and the Roman government is clueless. And these obscure, common, ordinary people, just like you and me, are hearing from God, going to the temple, holding the Messiah in their arms, and receiving revelation. What do you want in this end of this year and into this new year? Grab hold of hope. Grab hold of hope. One of my go-to verses, and I do apologize when I begin to repeat myself, as some people have told me I do, but right down underneath my feet here on the concrete is written one of my go-to verses. For you new folks, when they built Living Faith Church, the members came out and on the concrete all over the building before they... I think before they built the walls, I'm not sure. But they got, they got down on the concrete and wrote scripture verses and, and, and marker. And they're, they're, they're here. And sooner or later, we'll replace this carpet. And you'll come in and see it and write your own. We'll, we'll open it up to you and let you write your own. And I knew that this is where I stand to preach when we re rebuilt this stage about a year and a half ago. And so I got down and wrote right down here my, my go-to verse. I want you to look at it. Even though I use it a lot, I want you to look at it and let the words touch your heart. And I want you to think about it as we get ready to finish. Joel, will you come and give me a little more music, brother? Hebrews 11 and 6. And without faith, how many of you have faith? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, stop for a second. Just, just question your heart. Question your heart. Do you want to be pleasing to God? Question your heart. Are you here to serve God? Are you just sitting in church because you think if you sit in church, you're going to make it to heaven? Well, if you sit in your garage, you ain't going to turn into a Ford. Sitting in church ain't going to do you no good. Amen? <clears throat> Impossible to please God because, <clears throat> please excuse me, <clears throat> anybody or anyone, somebody say anyone, and then say everyone, everyone who comes to him. So every one of us is eligible to come to God. Well, Pastor, you don't know about, no, I don't. I don't, but God does. And he still says, come here, come on, come close. You see, you got stuff in your life that makes you feel like you can't get close to God. Would it shock you to know I got stuff in my life that causes me to feel like I can't get close to God? We're the same. We're human. So anyone and everyone who comes to him, another question for your heart. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Another question for your heart. Do you want to get closer to God? Do you want to get closer to God? That's a question for your heart. I'm not even asking you for an amen. Because if I did, you'd say, well, i got to say that. People around me will think I'm a heathen. So I want to please God, and I want to come to God. And he goes on and he said, you must believe that he exists. I know in my heart of hearts, in my mind and in my soul, that there is a God. 
And I know one other thing about him. I know he's good. He's good. His character is good. His nature is good. He's loving and kind and compassionate. And he's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. He loves you. One more time, he's not mad at you. He wants you to draw close to him. And then he does something. He rewards us. Now please don't think about money. Please don't think about money. Please don't let that be your thought. Because the reward I want from God is God. More of him in me and through me and on me. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. What are you seeking, remember? Simeon was looking for the hope of Israel. Simeon was looking for the hope. And God has instructed me to begin preaching in this new year. Grab hold of hope. Dare to believe that God will. In spite of all you've been told, in spite of the circumstances, Earnestly seek Him. So, I need to go here. Have you been in the Word lately to talk to your Savior? And have you prayed lately? Well, I have to. No, you don't have to. But you have to. Prayer will become a heartbeat. Chambers, a writer some of you know, said prayer is breathing for the soul. Prayer is breathing for the soul. So take a deep breath spiritually. 